transition is a, the, the next step, which is a really big topic in Germany because our patients, especially the rare disease patients, are usually um, um, covered by pediatricians and geneticists. In Germany, up um, to the age of 18, the pediatricians and the children's hospitals are responsible for the patients. These patients have to be transferred or make a, they have to make a transition to adult physicians who are not experienced with these diseases, who get a patient at the age of 18 years who has several surgeries, a medical history that is enough for 10 other patients, and then this adult physician has to take care of this patient. We don't have only the medical problem, we have also the problem that adolescence itself is a problem. So these patients are between 16 and 18, they have problems with puberty, they have their own problems or also in, in healthy children, but especially in children that have a chronic disease, it's much more difficult. Transition is defined by the Society of Adolescent Medicine um, as a purposeful planned process that addresses the medical, psychosocial and educational needs of adolescents with chronic physical and medical conditions as they move from child-centered to adult-oriented healthcare systems. What we need to do is to bridge the gap between the pediatric and the adult healthcare system. The question is how we find the best to, to, to deal with this increasing number of um, young adults that are um, suffering from severe diseases. The, there are several studies from 2009 and 11, uh, 11 that show the, the advantages and disadvantages of pediatric care in contrast to adult care. So the pediatric care is much more family um, oriented. The parents are involved. They can discuss as well with the physicians. It's much more a comfortable atmosphere. It's more protective. So the, the care is more an overall care and not focused on only one symptom. It's more prescriptive, um, prescriptive and the focus in pediatrics is more, I, I'm not a pediatrician, but this is my, um, my, my experience or my idea, it's more focused on development, on growth, and on, on just to, to, to support the child to go to adulthood. Adult care, in contrast, is more independency. The patients have to decide themselves. They should decide. They should discuss with the physician or at least have an own opinion what to do, how to do, and how to manage the disease. In this um, clinical trials that were done with questionnaires or studies that were done with questionnaires and um, uh, patients or adolescents with uh, uh, um, chronic diseases were asked what they wish. The key, or the, 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 it was very clear that all adolescents with chronic diseases want a transition. They want to be more involved in uh, decisions. They want to be more independent. We have not only the, the mild affected patients and the severe men, uh, physically handicapped people, uh, patients, but we have also the mental retarded patients. So the group of, uh, or the heterogeneity of the group we want to trans, uh, transfer to adulthood is much bigger than um, expected. From the adult physician's perspective, there was a study done in 2009, and they were asked, uh, or it, the, the aim was to, to understand their concerns how to, uh, regarding transition and what they feel if they are in, um, have to deal with um, patient, uh, chronic um, patients. First, the, the physicians had a concern about their medical competency because they are not used to, to deal with these rare diseases or com uh, difficult diseases. Second is the patient's psychosocial needs. This is also the patient's maturity. What can they expect from these patients? How, how do they live? So this is something which is very difficult for an um, adult physician. Also the system issues, because these patients need more time. More time needs, the, the physician has less time for other patients. And since these, we are talking about rare disease patients, MPS2 patients um, in particular, and patients with an, at least an, um, physical handicap, the families for sure are involved. So this is something that the adult physician is usually not used to. And then the biggest problem is 
the transition coordination. Who is coordinating that? Who is taking care that this process is done in a proper way? So the goal of transition is that the time of transfer to, to adult services should be the accumulation of a period of planned and coordinated transition care and guided by the choice and physical, emotional and social maturity of young um, persons. So this is very nice, but as I told before, very difficult to, to, to transfer to practice. Now back to, to MPS2 and uh, the heterogeneity of the disease. We have here, we have the severe patients with physical involvement, but also a mental retardation. These patients are not able to discuss with the physician to be independent from the physician and to, do, to discuss what they want. But we have also patients with a physical involvement or severe involvement who need support, who are not totally or in, completely independent, but without any mental retardation. This patient, for example, is a, a tax advisor but he is almost blind, he has contractures, he has a severe pulmonary involvement, he has a heart valve replacement, he has a craniocervical stenosis. So this patient is living alone, he is someone who, who is independent, but if he goes to an adult physician, they are mostly focused on one symptom. So the, to the, for the cardiological problem, he goes to a cardiologist, but nobody is coordinating the, the multisystemic disease. The clinical course in the severe affected patient, it starts early and it stops early. So before we had any therapies or regular follow-ups, the patients died before they went to, to, to um, adolescence or adulthood. But nowadays, it's, it's different. And the attenuated patients are sometimes a, a much bigger problem for, um, for, for physicians because they have the same symptoms, they have the same problems like the severe affected patient except the mental retardation, but nobody is really aware of the, the, the multidisciplinary, uh, the multisystemic disease and they need treatment as well. If these patients need, for example, a surgical procedure, where should we take care of this patient? In an adult ward? where nobody knows about the disease, nobody has an idea that these patients have a lot of anesthesia complications and so on. So what do we need for a transition? We need a coordinator. Someone has to be responsible, someone has to organize, otherwise everybody thinks the other is doing it and nothing happens. So someone has to organize. There should be or there must be some interested adult physicians you can involve and you can discuss with. In Magdeburg, there's um, at the university, the endocrinology at the pediatric department, they have a collaboration with the adult um, um, endocrinology and what they are doing is they have counselings together up to the age of 16 to 18, the pediatrician and the, the adult endocrinologist having counselings together to switch the patient in a very smooth way from childhood or adolescent to adulthood. This is, would be one option, for example. A primary health care system, a social worker who helps with all the problems patients have to deal with. So the components for a successful transition is at least self, uh, first self-determination, the person-centered planning, the preparation for adult health care, so not only the, the families and the patients, but also the, the physicians have to be prepared the work and independence, inclusion in community life, which is very important, and the start early. So theoretically, there are a lot of recommendations, and I will just give it as a basis for discussion, how to manage. But what we should do, and what I always try to do with my adolescent patient, is to give them the opportunity to talk to me without the parents, so that they they can ask questions they would never ask when parents are in, in the room, and that they feel more accepted as an adolescent or a young adult. Then the transition for sure has to involve the caregivers and the, the, the families and the parents, because they are taking care so long for these patients. And I think for, for parents itself, it is very difficult to give independency to, to an adolescent um, healthy child. But in these ch children, it's much more difficult, I guess. 
What we need is a multidisciplinary and multi-agency team to or service to, to take care of these patients. And optimal is if the, the, the optimum is if there's a really a cooperative working um, relationship between the pediatricians and the adult physicians. The coordinator shouldn't be always a physician. It can be a nurse, it can be a, a, a social worker, it can be um, someone else. It's just important that there is someone who is taking care of that problem. The young people should be encouraged to take part of it, to actively discuss what they want, what their needs are, and what to do. And <clears throat> the adult physicians, um, or the involvement of the adult physicians prior the transfer helps to, to make it easier. But finally, and this is now I come back to the heterogeneity of MPS patients, not one guideline fits to all. So we have the mental retarded patient that need a different um, um, treatment than the attenuated patient without any mental retardation. So we really have to, to make it in, in an individual way, but organized as, well, um, as, or as much organized as possible. So finally, the optimal healthcare is achieved when every person at every age receives healthcare that is medically and developmentally appropriate. This is from the American Academy of Pediatrics from 2002. And I think this is at really the optimum. This is that what we want to, to reach, but there's a lot to do.